Hey everybody, welcome back to Vanland. Thank you for joining us for another day in the shop. Today we're gonna to be talking about the high output alternators and whether or not you need one for your van. One of the questions we get a lot when we're specifying a power system is whether or not we should add a secondary alternator to the system to give it additional charging power. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons of installing a secondary alternator. We're gonna actually calculate how much power a van really uses during daily use. And then we're gonna take that information and help you guys determine when it is appropriate to add a secondary alternator to your van. The reason you would want a secondary alternator on your van is because it simply produces a ton more power. And with that power, you can use it to run your appliances and charge your batteries at the same time. You'll pretty much have power to spare anytime the van is running. So with an alternator that produces over 200 amps, it eliminates the need for any type of additional generator on the van whatsoever. So generators that run on propane or diesel fuel or gasoline are completely obsolete when you have an alternator that produces as much power as this one that does that we're gonna talk about today. Some of the downsides that you guys should know about in terms of installing a secondary alternator are that it really, reduces the engine efficiency is one of the main things. So the alternator typically bolts into the same place an air conditioning compressor does. And for the same reason, when it's running, the engine is a little bit less efficient in terms of the mileage you're gonna get. One of the other downsides is that it adds some complexity to the system. So anytime you have an additional piece of equipment running and there are definitely moving parts on an alternator, you've added some complexity that otherwise you won't, wouldn't want to add if you don't need it. The third potential downside is that there is the potential for damage to the battery system and the alternator if it's not hooked up correctly. So it is extremely important for this type of job that it is done by a qualified professional, definitely somebody who knows what they're doing so that it can be done properly. Let's take a look at this alternator that we're gonna install today. This is a high output 280 amp alternator from Nations. So let's take a look at what it looks like. Ah, that new alternator smell. Just kidding, it doesn't smell like anything, but it's pretty heavy. So this is the unit here. This is gonna bolt up to the motor the Mercedes sprinters come with a mounting point. Like I said, um, if, you're, if you have a sprinter with the rear air conditioner, it's the same place that the air conditioner compressor is mounted. So if you do have that, you wouldn't be able to install this in the same place, so something to consider. And this simply gets bolted onto the frame and then the belt is connected right here and simply as the engine is turning, it's spinning the alternator, creating power. So. Pretty simple in its design. Here is the regulator that the unit comes with, and this is a Balmar 618. So this is a pretty straightforward regulator. It's gonna read the temperature of the alternator and also the voltage of your house battery system. So this tells the alternator when and how much power to produce. This is a critical part of the system. You can't really install this successfully without both the alternator and the regulator. The wiring that comes off of the regulator, here's what these are. So your black is your ground, and that goes here onto the body of the alternator. The blue wire is uh, the control wire that is telling the alternator turn on and off and send power. The red wire here is reading the voltage at the positive terminal off of the alternator. The brown wire is the exciter wire, and this is connected underneath the seat to the terminal that has power only when the vehicle is running. And then this red wire goes back to the batteries, so that is sending the voltage from the batteries up to the regulator so it can read that. And then finally, we have the gray wire here, and this is the temperature sensor that is reading the temperature at the alternator. So all of these inputs are required, and everything is actually already pre-wired, which makes it super nice. Um, all you need to do is hook it up, and finally, we have a couple fuses here. So you do want to check that these fuses are good before you fire up the alternator, because if either of these blows, it will not work. So that's pretty much it. Um, this gets bolted onto the frame. This gets mounted under the hood. Typically, it could be mounted inside. 
Um, and the only other wire we're gonna need to run is a heavy gauge power wire from the batteries to the alternator. We're gonna use two aught wire based on the distance and the amperage that we have to run. And then also it is recommended that the negative ground also be grounded to the house battery system. So we'll actually be running three wires, the voltage sensor wire, the ground, and the main power wire from the alternator, which is up front, to the battery system, which is in the back. Okay, let's do it. It's time for the guys who have the wrenches and the know-how to do this. So let's uh, go put it in. Okay, so before we get into the installation, I wanted to give you guys a couple pieces of information that you should really know before you attempt a job like this, because there are some dangers with installing this equipment. Um, first of all, this is a high output alternator that's capable of producing up to 280 amps. So that's a ton of power. And the number one thing is that it has to be wired correctly. The wire that goes from the alternator back to the batteries has to be of sufficient gauge that it will not heat up and try to melt with that much power moving through it. Um, the second and probably the most critical is that the alternator always has to be connected to the batteries when the vehicle is running. So if there's a disconnect between the alternator and the batteries and the vehicle is running, meaning it's turning the alternator, it's very likely that there will be a voltage spike in the alternator and it can cause damage that will render the alternator completely inoperable. Um, there is a fix for it, but it involves removing the alternator and having it put on a bench, having some of the parts replaced and then reinstalling, which is something you definitely do not want to do. The last thing that is really important is to know that lithium batteries can absorb just about as much power as you can throw at them. So without the proper regulators and battery management in place, it's quite easy for the alternator to produce so much power that it's pumping the batteries full of electricity and heating them up and potentially in the worst case scenario, blowing up the battery. So um, that's just the reality of it. These are things you should know before you decide to purchase and or install something like this um, because it's a great piece of equipment, but it is not worth ruining your entire power system or lighting your van on fire to have. alternator is installed and the regulator has been hooked up. So now it's the moment of truth that we're going to start up the van and um, just confirm that all the voltages and amperages are correct and that we're getting positive power coming into the battery system. All right, here we go. So far, nothing. Oh, there it goes. All right. The way that uh, this alternator and regulator system work, it does bring up the power gradually so there aren't um, voltage and amperage spikes. So I did expect that. Um, we are now looking at over 100 amps of power coming into the system. Um, that's at idle. Of course, when you're driving, then the power that the alternator is putting out is going to go up significantly. We have a couple more tests to run and uh, then we'll basically take it for a test drive as well and see what we're getting on the road. But um, this is pretty exciting. We've got a lot of additional power now in the van, even at idle, um, it's, it's gonna be enough, like I said, to run the whole van and still charge the batteries, which is awesome. Hmm, okay. So we're down to the last issue, which is that we are popping our 250 amp breaker when we're at idle, which is not good. Otherwise, it looks like everything is running properly, but fairly common issue. So I'm gonna address that by making sure all the connections are super tight um, and I may have to pull that breaker out and replace it with a new one. Um, we'll see. This is where you just have to track down the gremlins and figure out what's going on. I switched out the breaker and that appears to have solved the problem. So I don't know if this was just a bad one. I did of course redo all the connections on it. So it may have been a slightly loose connection. Not sure, but sometimes it's worth just swapping a piece out that you think might be the problem. So we had a little bit of trouble getting the system started up. It ended up being 
the breaker that we were using. Um, and so a piece of advice if you're installing an alternator like this is to make sure you're using the absolute highest quality breaker that you can find. And something that's really important is to get a breaker that has large enough terminals. I find that breakers even up to 300 amps often have um, like very small terminals on them. And I think that's the issue we had. So there's a lot of power coming through the main uh, power wire. Um, from the alternator to the batteries and the new fuse basically has not or sorry the new breaker has not popped at all um, And I did several tests on this including a road test where we got it up to almost 200 amps of output So the first thing that we need to determine is how much power does this van actually use? And the van that we're doing this demo in has pretty much all of the systems that you would have in your van. So we're going to be able to run through basically a fairly complex van build to see, you know, how much power it's using um, with each individual component. And then we're going to add that all up and determine how much power this van needs for an entire day. Okay, so what we've done here is I've pulled up my Victron battery monitor on the phone. As we turn on each individual component, we're gonna be able to read how many amps it's drawing. So as of right now, we're sitting at negative four amps, um, and that's just because we have some lighting on in here, but otherwise I've turned everything off, and I was, if I was to turn off that light, it would ba basically go to zero, so that you, you want that to be your starting point when you're determining you know, how much power um, the van is actually using. And I also have the readout here on my display. Let's start with just the fan because it's pretty hot in here today. I wanna to get the fan started up. And I'm gonna turn it all the way up to the highest speed. Okay, so we're at negative seven amps or so. So the fan at full speed is drawing three amps because we were at negative four, we've gone to negative seven. So that's how much the fan uses. Uh, we're going to turn on some lights here. So we have a light in the bathroom and then we have the lights in the ceiling. So those are on and we're now to negative 8.3 amps or so. Um, so that gives you an idea of how much power the lights use, which is not that much. Uh, we also have some exterior lights. I'm going to go ahead and turn those on. Uh, I'm going to power up our USBs and our, um, our little night light that's in the back. So we're now sitting at just over 11 amps being consumed. Uh, we'll turn on the refrigerator. Um, the refrigerator is warm at the moment. So as it comes on, it's basically going to be running at full capacity. So this gives you an idea of how much um, the refrigerator consumes when it is running. Uh, we're now at negative 14.6 amps. Um, and obviously a refrigerator doesn't run all the time. It might run 50% or less of the time in a van, so take that into consideration. Uh, I'll, I'm also gonna turn on the water pump right now, um, at least briefly, to see how much we're using there. And so we've gone from negative 17 to approximately negative 21 or so. I'm gonna shut that back off. And we have a couple little gauges up here. Those aren't gonna draw much power. I'll turn on my um, stereo equipment. Um, it's obviously not putting out sound. It will use a lot more power when it's actually on, but as of right now, it's firing up the amp. Um, and then I'll also turn on the S-Bar heater. The S-Bar starts out with heating up some glow plugs, so it's always going to draw more power right at the beginning than it does when it's running. We'll go ahead and turn that on. Okay. So, um, it's kind of up and down a little bit as things use a different amount of power, but in the neighborhood of negative 17 to negative 20 amps right now is what we're consuming. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn the water pump back on. Actually, it has already cut off due to it being at fully pressurized, uh, but that just gives you an idea. So if I'm running the van and basically have all my systems going um, with normal use, then you're going to be in the neighborhood of probably negative 15 to negative 20 amps, again, while all of these appliances are on. So the final test that we need to do is to turn on the 12 volt air conditioner. And your air conditioner is gonna be by far your biggest draw, uh, your biggest power draw in the van. Um, let's actually turn it on. The temperature has been turned all the way down and the fan has been turned all the way up. So this is running at full blast. And we are at negative 66 amps or so. 
With the air conditioner, it doesn't run at the same power draw for all day. Um, it will generally be between 30 and 60 amps that it's drawing. So you can kind of average it out um, if you're running it for four hours, let's say. It probably averages in the neighborhood of 45 amps per hour uh, being consumed to run the air conditioner. Obviously, the hotter it is, the more it's going to consume. Um, if you bring the van down to temperature and you're parked in the shade, then it's going to use a lot less power. So there you have it. We have a, a rough idea of how much power that this van consumes with all of its appliances on minus the air conditioner and then all of the appliances on plus the air conditioner. And as you guys can see, there's a huge difference. Um, the air conditioner is going to be the largest draw in the power system. And we need to take that into account when we're determining whether or not something like a secondary alternator is going to be needed for a van like this. The way a mobile power system works is that it starts with the battery storage, and then you have power coming into those batteries or recharging them, and then you have power going out of those batteries or being consumed. So when you're trying to determine, you know, how much battery capacity do you need, how much solar charging do you need, and how much is everything going to require, um, you just need to take into consideration power in and power out. So the first thing we want to talk about is how does power get into the batteries? And for a van like this, there are typically three ways um, that it will be powered up. The first is obviously with solar, and that's usually everyone's favorite way to power a van is to put solar panels on the roof. The thing with solar is that it gives you limited power and it only works for part of the day. The second way that a van can be powered up is shore power, charging it via an outlet that's at your house or at a campsite. And we do recommend adding shore power to every van because it's one of the fastest and most reliable ways to charge up a van. So before you go on a trip the night before, you should plug in and get the batteries completely topped up um, for the best results during your trip. And the third way that you can power get power into your system is through alternator charging. So every van comes with an alternator. That's how your main starter battery is charged. It is possible to pull some amperage off of that alternator to charge your batteries. But if you're using only the factory alternator, you really want to only be drawing about 30 amps max. Um, and that's so that you don't burn it out because the more stress you put on an alternator, the hotter it gets and the more likely it is to burn out. And alternators, by the way, do have a lifespan. So the harder you wear them, the shorter their lifespan will be. In a system that uses uh, a significant amount of power, like this one does when the air conditioner is running, it's worth thinking about how can we get more power into the system? One of the ways to do that, obviously, would be to put additional solar panels on the roof. But oftentimes there's a limited amount of space that you can charge. And then also, since you're only getting sun part of the day and part of the year, it's not always the most reliable way to charge. Um, another way to get more power into the battery system is to put a secondary high output alternator onto the van. And this is what we are testing out today because this particular van can draw up to 70, 80, 90 amps when it's running. And just through solar charging, it's not gonna be enough to keep up with the demand. To determine if this is a product that you would need for your van, I wanna go over two scenarios that are pretty common and um, just explain how much power a van typically uses and then how much power you are collecting from the different ways that power is coming into the van. So scenario one is your standard van that's built out as a camper, but with no air conditioner. As we, as we saw before, the air conditioner is typically the highest draw on any power system. So let's first take a look at if you do not have an air conditioner. I find that over the course of the day, um, and this is based on history that I get from um, my Victron equipment, that typically I'm using about 10 amps per hour during the daylight hours or when we're awake, and then about five amps per hour um, during the nighttime hours. And that's typically just to run the refrigerator and maybe a couple other minor things, the heater um, when it's cold out. So in that scenario, 10 amps per hour for 12 hours is gonna be 120 amp hours per day. And then five amps per hour for the other 12 hours is an additional 60 amps per day. 
So in total, I would say on average, um, about 180 amp hours per day would be the standard consumption. So now let's take a look at all the power that we have coming into the power system. For a 200 watt solar system, uh, if that is in the sun for six hours, that's gonna um, gain about 90 amp hours into the power system. And if we have an alternator that produces 30 amps and we're driving the van for about three hours during the day, that's gonna be an additional 90 amp hours. And that equals out to 180 amp hours, which is actually the same amount as our usage for the day. So under this type of scenario, which is actually pretty common, if you're doing a bit of driving during the day and you have a solar panel and the sun is out, generally you're getting about as much incoming power as the power expenditure. So in this case, um, if you have a couple hundred, maybe 200 to 400 amp hours of battery storage, then your daily use is pretty much balancing out. So only if you're not driving or if the sun isn't out, would you need to like, let's say, plug in the vehicle for additional power. Um, so in this scenario, I would say that the average van that does not have an air conditioner and has basic usage might not need a high output alternator um, and still be able to go for you know, a full week under normal conditions without having to, to stop and recharge at shore power or something like that. Let's look at the second scenario, and this would be for a van that not only has an air conditioner, but needs to use it every day. Standard usage is gonna be 180, but if we add on an air conditioner, uh, let me check my notes here. Let's say we're doing 50 amps for six hours. That's an additional 300 amp hours on top of the 180. So the consumption in a van like this that's running the air conditioner um, would be closer to 480 to 500 amp hours versus 180 for a van that doesn't have an air conditioner. So you can see there's quite a big difference. So now if we continue on and we, we just use the standard charging uh, methods and we're only getting that additional 180 amp hours of power per day, um, you can see that we're gonna have a deficit of about 300 amp hours from running the air conditioner. In a scenario where you're running a power deficit, this is really where it makes sense to add the high output alternator. So in the same scenario where the air conditioner is being run for six hours a day and we're coming up short on power, adding the secondary alternator is gonna give you, let's say for the same three hours of driving, it's gonna give you an additional approximately 400 to 450 amp hours of power. And so that's a ton of extra power. You're gonna be able to charge the batteries, run the air conditioner, and still have plenty of power to spare. Under this type of setup, you can pretty much go indefinitely. So if someone was to wanna to take a long trip and they knew they were gonna be in conditions that were gonna be very hot, and they would be running their air conditioner essentially every day, this is the perfect scenario to add that extra alternator. So now the question is, do you guys need an alternator on your van. And I would say basically do the math. That's how you'll know if you really need one or not. If you feel like you're gonna be running short on power, then the high output secondary alternator is probably your best bet. Um, it's super reliable. It charges the batteries extremely fast. And once you get it installed correctly, it's like having a power plant on your van, which is really awesome. Basically you have unlimited power, or at least that's what it feels like when you install something like this. So um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you next time.